Good morning. It's great to see you folks who have joined on for a dose of encouragement today. Good morning, Pat. It's good to see you. Uh, hey, Phil, Miss Peggy. Uh, good to have y'all tuned in with us today. Thank you so much for that sweet message I got uh, last week. Do appreciate that so much. Hope everyone's having a good day so far. And boy, it's a cold morning here in Greenfield this morning. Very cold. Um, so I hope you're able to stay warm wherever you are and whatever you're doing uh, this morning. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10 is where we'll be reading today. So let's be, uh, let's be getting the Bibles open there. Uh, I heard a story that I wanted to share with you this morning uh, about a mom who uh, she was getting ready to do her Christmas shopping. And she just sort of had this gut feeling that maybe she'd been spending way too much money on Christmas. I think probably a lot of us have that feeling uh, from time to time. But uh, she came up with an idea of something to do about it. She decided that this year she was going to, uh, she was going to get more for less. That was her idea. So she started months before Christmas arrived, and she started going to yard sales and scrounging around to find good used uh, uh, gifts to get for her kids. And uh, she was able to buy twice as much for less than half the money. So when Christmas Eve came, the tree was just uh, surrounded by mounds and mounds of packages. Uh, for the, the children to open. And they were so excited as they opened one after one after one after one, package after package after package. But then on Christmas morning, there were more. Uh, she'd had some second thoughts about her plan, and uh, right toward the end, she felt guilty. So she went ahead and bought some new gifts uh, for them to open on Christmas morning. And so on Christmas morning, the kids started in uh, uh, opening the presents, but uh, very quickly, they just, they just stopped. And the uh, mother asked, what's going on? Why, why are you stopping? And they said, Mom, we're just too tired to open any more presents. Um, it's hard to imagine a kid being too tired to open a Christmas present, but I guess uh, when you've, you've had enough, that can happen. What is it about human nature that uh, tells us that no matter how much we have, it's, it's not enough? We need more. We need something newer. We need something better. We need something bigger. We need more than what we have. There, there's a the human instinct that just keeps driving us to accumulate more and more and better and better and bigger and bigger. That's why 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 10 is such an important passage for us to keep always in our minds. In this passage, Paul teaches us about the importance of learning to be happy with what we have. He says that godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. Those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare or trap, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith, in their greediness, and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. I'm sure that verse was timely 2,000 years ago when Paul wrote it, but you know what? It's just as timely today in December 2020 as it was so long ago. This passage reminds us that the richest man is the one who has God in his life. Godliness with contentment is great gain. That's the greatest profit. That's the greatest investment you can make in your life is to live a life of godliness with contentment. 
Godliness is just simply when you live your life acknowledging God, uh, listening to God, following God, honoring God, respecting God. Uh, and when God is a constant part of your life, you're a rich person. You we, Having God in your life, you know that you will have, always have everything you need from a physical standpoint, spiritual, emotional. God is that 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 one piece of the puzzle that we can't do without. And whatever our station may be, rich or poor, if you have God in your life, you can find contentment. You can find peace and calmness and knowing that He is a great treasure. Um, if you have godliness with contentment, then you will have a focus on the spiritual blessings that you have instead of chasing after the material things that, that will never really bring any lasting happiness anyway. So often we convince ourselves, I just need a little bit more. If I could just have a little bit more money, if I could just have a little bit bigger house, if I could just have a little bit nicer car, then I would be happy, then I could relax. But that's a mirage. The truth is, if, if I cannot be happy with what I have now, I'll never be happy with more. In verse 7, Paul reminds us, we brought nothing into this world and we're carrying nothing out. Wealth has no lasting power. Uh, it's here today, it's gone tomorrow, and when the spirit leaves the body, all the physical things that we accumulate, we're going to leave behind. They are of no benefit whatsoever in the eternal realm to which we are going. Well, why invest so much in something that cannot last? when we can invest in something that will last forever. So in verse 8, we realize that because we have food and clothing and our basic needs are met and our most importantly, our spiritual needs are met, we can be content. We can always trust that God will provide our basic needs. And you know, when you reduce it to that, food and clothing, you know, you stop and you think there's so many people in the world that are struggling even to have that, who even right now are wondering where their next meal is going to come from, Wonder, wondering whether or not they have the clothing to survive the cold. How can I complain when I, I'm sitting here in a warm room talking to you and, and opening this uh, scripture together? How, how can I complain when there are so many other people in the world struggling even to do that, to stay warm, to stay fed. And, um, you know, when you look at it from that perspective, it turns a switch where instead of seeking to accumulate more, you realize I should be seeking to share more. And that, that's really what God would, would want me to be doing. And furthermore, not only... Is, can, is life so unpleasant and unhappy when you're discontented and always wanting more? But it can be spiritually dangerous too. Greed and, and covetousness is the root of all kinds of evil. Evils that drown men in destruction and perdition. Per, a, a, a discontented person will, will not be grateful to God the way they really should be. They may be envious of others. They may be tempted to dishonesty, uh, stealing. They may uh, find themselves overloaded with debt, drowned in anxiety and depression. So the richest person in the world is the person who has God in their life and they're content with that. They recognize that He is the greatest treasure that they could have. So, uh, in this uh, holiday season, let's ask God to help us unwrap the gift of contentment. May He help us to be more aware of how truly blessed we are. May He help us to be good stewards of the blessings that He has provided us. And may He help us to be content to have Him in our lives. Uh, I, I see Jeremy uh, commenting here. 
uh, that, 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 that this is where we as Christians need to help. And you're right, Jeremy, we do. And uh, my, my hope is that by looking at this passage today, that'll be our, our mindset. More about what we can give than what we can take. More about sharing what we have than trying to always accumulate something more or something bigger or something better or whatever the case may be. It's not a sin to have money. It's not a sin to enjoy nice things. I, I, I'm certainly not saying that. But when our pursuit of those things is, is taking over our lives, well, that's when it becomes spiritually dangerous to us. So thank you for reminding us of that, Jeremy. And uh, it's great to see uh, all of you have joined in for this devotional today. Uh, also, Jeremy uh, urges us to pray for the Greer family. And so we'll do that here in just a moment. Um, if you will, let's all bow together. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day, for your presence in our lives, Father. We know that you are the greatest treasure that we could hope for. We're just so grateful to have you in our lives and for all of the wonderful things that you provide. We pray today that you will help us to have a greater spirit of contentment and uh, to realize that godliness with contentment is true riches and great gain in this world. Help us to find contentment, Lord, with the things that you've provided, the food, the clothing that we have, and help us to be open to the opportunities that we have to give and share and be helpful to those who are struggling. We recognize, Father, that uh, as far as material things go, we we brought nothing with us, and we're not taking anything with us when we leave this world. And so we pray that you will help us to have always a greater focus on the, the spiritual things, to invest most of our attention and energy into uh, building up those spiritual riches. And those are the things that matter most. Most of all, Father, we just thank you for Jesus and know that he is the greatest gift that we could ever hope to receive and the hope that he has purchased for us uh, is beyond our comprehension. Help us, Father, as we strive to, to share that blessing with others so that they might be saved, so that they might have a home in heaven as well. Lord, please forgive us of our sins and strengthen us against the things that tempt us. Please provide for us today our daily bread as we also pray daily bread for those who are sick and those who are struggling, those who are grieving. We pray today for the Greer family and praying, Lord, that you will keep them in your loving care. Continue my, our prayer for the Settle family, for Johnny Cantrell and Jerry Reddick, for Tim Fuqua and, and Marvin Estes. Please continue to keep these folks in your, prayer, in, the, in your care, Lord, and watch over them as only you can. In this Christmas season, we are so mindful, Lord, of the great gifts that you have provided through Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, that we will never take those for granted, but that we'll always be mindful to share them with others. So, Lord, please go with us today and keep us always in your love and care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. I'm so thankful. We've had this chance to open God's Word together and, and start this day in prayer. Hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great weekend. And uh, look forward to being together again next Tuesday for our next dose of encouragement. Till then, God bless. Love you all.